Okay, so this video is going to be a bit different from my other ones and it's going to be more of a concept overview. And the concept overview is going to be about the workspace and more about accessing the workspace via a script. And as the documentation says, these are all the valid ways of accessing the workspace. There is the workspace global, then the game that workspace, which in my opinion, this shouldn't be a valid way, but I will explain why in a bit. And there is also the game get service and workspace. And the game get service method should be used in most of the cases and if I go to the services tab and scroll down to this calling in scripts paragraph it says that it's the best practice to include services at the top of each script that utilizes them for quick identification with get service method like it's shown with this script right here and workspace is also considered a service and the get service method returns the instance of the specified service so get service workspace is going to return the workspace and now why do I think that game that workspace is bad using the game that workspace with the dot notation counts as getting a property of a data model which might break if the property let's say is modified for example if workspace was basically renamed to workspace 2 let's say so now if i make a local variable for workspace and then do game that workspace i suddenly have two options to choose from and then i basically have to think which one is the proper one of course game that workspace is still going to return the workspace but it just becomes confusing if you modify the workspace from let's say different scripts and some parts of your code might break when you reassign workspace's name where the get service method for workspace will always return workspace correctly and assigning the workspace into a local variable like i did right here is correct as assigning every other service for example the replicated storage and even though the workspace has its own global in my opinion it is better to do it this way for the code consistency because if for some reason i let's say add a part and then change the parts that parent to workspace all of a sudden I am using a global variable which basically just stands out in the editor because of the syntax where comparing to the instance class it has a constructor which is after the dot notation where the workspace only has events properties and enums but the same argument can also be made for the underscore before a variable and this underscore is just a naming condition that I personally use because of godot where it indicates a private method or property and also it's because it's easier for me to let's say distinguish for example class members in object-oriented programming from local variables and it's the same case with my round module which is only used in one script right here and this is from a project that I should probably continue working on at some point but anyway and even though it's not a native built-in Lua feature I still put an underscore before the variables or the functions whenever I want the object to basically only be used in one place and not shared between anything else and if i take for example my camera script i remember having a c frame value somewhere right here yep with an underscore because something like this is more convenient to just have underscore c frame instead of like custom C frame. Something like this is not going to get confusing because it's only used in one place and you don't have any other C frames or any other properties used in this function. But another argument that that could be said about the underscore is that it's only assigned to one variable and any other of the variables don't use it. And I always say that how you structure your code should be for you and yourself only except if while well, you are working with other people. I have it said in my mind that if there is an underscore before a variable, that it basically means one of the things that I listed above, which is to distinguish the class members from local variables, for having custom property values and etc. And something like this doesn't confuse me and it makes the code more consistent, more easier to understand for myself. And this doesn't mean that I'm throwing away my naming conversion out of the window, although it might confuse some people, like I said, this is for me. But there is also a few things that I wanted to talk about, which is if you do a local global variable, so local workspace would be equal to game get service workspace, something like this is overwriting global variables to work within a set scope or environment of a script. But what's the environment of a script? Well, each script has a script variable, which is this one, and this is a global variable too. Every script has this variable by default, and each script has a dictionary table assigned to it, and the dictionary table basically just holds the global. And the dictionary table is the script's environment. So if I did like local value is equal to, and give it a string of five, and it printed out the get environment, followed by dot notation and value. If I run this script, it's going to print out nil. 
and that's because this is a local value. But if I remove the local, it's going to print out 5 from right here. And I don't want this video to be too long, so I recommend that you read about environment variables yourself. There is plenty of information out there on the internet. And assigning a global into a local scope isn't considered bad practice by itself, but if you define globals with the underscore g, let's say my global, assigning these globals into a local scope, imagine this would be script 2, like that, this is slow and this is considered bad practice. Something like this is not the same as assigning a Roblox's global variable into a local scope. So yeah, just to summarize anything using workspace, game get service, workspace, using underscore for code consistency, or even if you don't want to use the underscore, you can just do workspace service or anything else anything from this is all right if you want to use game that workspace you should just be careful but anything from here is basically just proper and just for the last thing that i wanted to show really quickly you can use the http service to get a json byte size value of a variable or a table or anything else so i'm just going to put the workspace re reference in here and then just print out the json value and i know that this works on a table so what we can do is put workspace variable into a table and then print out the length of the JSON value. So if I print it out, it's going to be just six. And this is a byte size of the table that holds the data right here. So this workspace variable is six bytes. If I send it an empty table and do a run test, it's going to be two, which means that the workspace variable by itself should be four. And it is four right here. And for anyone wondering how much is six bytes, one gigabyte is equal to one billion bytes. That would mean that the six bytes would be equal to 6 e minus 7 which is 6 times 10 to the power of minus 7 which is equal to the 7 decimal position so this is going to be the percentage value from 1 gigabyte so you can see that something like this is not a lot and using a local variable is basically the same performance as using the global but yeah like i said using workspace is fine get service workspace is fine and this is the recommended method for getting the services and yeah that's basically going to be everything for today so thank you guys for watching and see ya